Good morning, students. I hope I'm audible to everybody. Can some of you just drop in a message that are you audible and is the screen being shared with you all? Okay, so I think it is audible and the screen is also shared. Fine. Fine. Okay. So there is it's almost 10 30 and many of you have joined the webinar still some of you are joining so please be punctual at 10 30. okay so today i will talk about applications of boolean algebra to logic gates and switching theory and i hope that the boolean algebra topic has already been covered in your classes so if it is not yet some topics are still if it is left you can just contact your concerned teachers so we will start our course from this topic onwards according to your CHO, right? Okay. So the outline of my today's presentation would be how Boolean algebra are used in logic gates and how it is also used in switching theory, right? Okay. So we move with the first section that is applications of Boolean algebra in logic gates. Now, as done in the class, we know that what is a Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is a distributive complemented lattice having at least two distinct elements as well as a zero element and a one element. And how do we represent a Boolean algebra? We write the set with the notation B and there are two binary operations plus and dot and there is a unary operation complement right and we have zero and one along with it so this entire set represents a boolean algebra so let's see who introduced boolean algebra george bool in 1854 invented the subject called boolean algebra boolean algebra it is the mathematical foundation of digital circuits it specifies the relationship between Boolean variables, which is used to design combinational logical circuits using logic gates, right? Okay. Now let's see the basics of Boolean algebra. Now a Boolean variable, it always takes value of either zero, which is a false value, and one, which is a true value. So Boolean variable will always give you values output as zero or one. So either you can write zero or one, or you can write it as false and true. The symbols that are used to represent Boolean variables, usually in good books, you will find the symbols as capital A, B, and C, capital alphabets. Small alphabets can also be used. So there is no hard and fast rule that you have to always use capital letters. This is the usual sign convention used, right? Okay, then what are the three basic logic operations in Boolean algebra? We have AND, we have OR, and we have NOT. So AND symbolizes dot, OR symbolizes plus, and NOT symbolizes complement, right? Fine. So these are the Boolean operators, plus, dot, and complement. So what are the meanings of them? I've already explained. A plus B, it means A or B. That means plus stands for OR operator. Similarly, A dot B, it means A and B. That means dot operator signifies the AND operator. And we have A complement, it means not A, right? So throughout your discrete structures, whatsoever we have done till now, you can find that when we started with the first topic, that is set theory, you did the operators, unions, and intersection. So intersection means and, and union means or, right? Similarly, when we went to logics chapter, we did conjunction and disjunction there. So conjunction meant and operator, and disjunction meant or operator. So you can find that in every chapter, the operators remain same, just the method to signify the operators, they change. Somewhere we are using union intersection symbols, somewhere we are using conjunction disjunction symbols, 
Similarly, in Boolean algebra, we use the symbols as plus and dot, right? Okay. And then the nodes in the circuit are represented by Boolean variables. So since we are today studying about the application, so we will discuss about the circuit diagrams. So wherever you will find the nodes, they will be represented by the Boolean variables, right? I hope this site is clear to everybody. There is no problem in this. Fine. We move on with the next slide. What are logic gates and truth tables? Digital logic gates, they are the building blocks from which all the digital electronic circuits and microprocessor based systems are made. So in a logic truth table, what happens? The left columns of the table, they show the input states or the input of the circuits and the corresponding right columns, they show you the output. So you have done this before also in logics also, we studied about the truth tables. So same way here also, whenever we'll discuss the logic gate, we will discuss the corresponding truth table for that particular logic gate, right? So a logic circuit truth table, it will show the status of the output terminal or the terminals of the logic gates and the logic circuits for all the possible input combinations. So now let's study our first truth table logic gate that is the OR gate. So this is the first logic gate OR gate. So I hope all of you are carrying a notebook and a pen along with you. Although I will provide you with my recordings of the link after the lecture, but still I would insist you that you should copy something while you are doing this lecture, right? So first of all, write down what is an OR gate and draw the structure for it. So that by the end of the lecture, you are able to go through all this and you are able to memorize what are all these gates about, right? So the structure of an OR gate, you can find that there are two input terminals, A and B, and this is the shape of OR gate. And there is an output terminal that has been determined by the variable, Boolean variable Z, right? What is the symbol for OR gate? OR gate is Z is equal to A plus B. So I told you in the beginning, in the first slide, that OR means the operator plus. So whenever we have an OR gate, it means A plus B, right? Now let's look at the logic table, the truth table. So you can see that the left columns of the table are telling me about the input variables and the extreme right column of the truth table is telling me about the output variable, right? So what can these Boolean variable take values? So the inputs can be either in terms of zero or it can be in terms of one. So in place of zero, I can also write F, F stands for false. Similarly, in place of one, I can write true. That means I can write the letter T, right? So it's your own thing that you want to write it in form of zero and one, or you want to write it in the form of T and F, right? So when both the inputs are zero, so zero plus zero, it will give you zero as the output, right? If any one of the input are zero and the other input is one, so it can be either 0 and 1 or it can be 1 and 0. So 0 plus 1 as well as 1 plus 0, both are equal to 1. So the output is 1. Likewise, if both the inputs are 1, 1 plus 1 will also give you 1. That means the input is the output is only 0 when both the inputs are 0. In all other cases, the output is always equal to 1, right? Now there is another representation of zero and one. In logic level, since we are dealing with logic circuits, digital circuits, so there the concept of voltage comes in. So high voltage is always represented by one and low voltage is represented by zero. So the, uh, since your ST2 or the end term examination is going to be multiple choice, so you should know that if the output is one, it also signifies high voltage, right? Likewise, if the output is zero, it also signifies low voltage. So the question can also come in terms of high voltage and low voltage. So you should know what is the meaning of high voltage and low voltage, right? So I hope the OR gate is clear to everybody. So this is our first logic gate, right? Okay. Let's move on with the second logic gate, that is the AND gate. 
let's see what is the circuit diagram for AND gate. So again, you can see that there are two input circuits, input terminals, and there is one output terminal that is Z. And you can also see that the shape of the gate has been changed, right? So it is in this form. How do we symbolize this gate? Z is equal to A dot B. So AND operator means it is dot, right? Let's look at the truth table. So you can see that A and B are my input terminals. So they can be either zero, they can be one of them can be zero and one of them can be one or both of them are one. Let's see what is my output. Zero dot zero is zero. Zero dot one is again zero. One dot zero is zero. And one dot one is again one, right? So in this case, you can see that the output is only one when both the inputs are one. In all other cases, the output is zero, right? So this is completely opposite that we did for OR gate, right? Okay. After this, we move on to the third basic gate, that is the NOT gate. What happens in a NOT gate? Look at the circuit diagram. In the circuit diagram of NOT gate, there is only one input variable and the output is also one, right? In AND and OR, there were two inputs. Now in NOT gate, there is only one input. Let's look at the symbol. So Z is equal to A complement, right? So OR gate was plus, AND gate was dot, and NOT gate is complement, right? Let's look at the logic gate. Z is equal to A complement. So now the input can be either zero or it can be one. So if the input is zero, NOT gate will give you the output as one. And if the input is one, the NOT gate will give you the output as zero, right? Okay, any doubts so far? You can always put your doubts in the question tab and I'll answer them. Any questions so far? Okay, so I cannot find any questions right now. Fine. So these are the three basic gates. Then we move on to the next gate, that is the NOR gate. Okay. So what is the NOR gate? The NOR gate, the circuit diagram of NOR gate is like this. So can you see it is a combination of OR gate and NOT gate? This is your OR. This was the symbol for OR gate. And in front of it, the NOT gate has been placed. That means whatever is the output of the OR gate, we have to take its complement, right? So let's look at the circuit symbol. So you can see Z is equal to A plus B whole complement. So what is the meaning of A plus B? A plus B was A or B. And if I'm writing N in front of it, that means I need to take its complement. So using the basic De Morgan's law, A plus B whole complement will be equal to A complement dot B complement. So NOT gate means Either you can write A plus B whole complement or you can write A complement dot B complement, right? Let's look at the logic gate, the circuit, the log, a truth table for this. So again, you can find there are two input terminals and there is one output terminal that is Z. Let's see. When both the inputs are zero, what happens? Zero plus zero is zero. Zero complement is one. Fine. So when both the inputs are zero, your output becomes one. Likewise, if one of the input is zero and one of the output is one, what happens then? Zero plus one is one. 
one complement will be zero. So you can find that in case of zero and one as the inputs, the output is always equal to zero. Let's look at the last case. When both the inputs are one, one plus one, that is also one, then one complement, it becomes Z, right? So here, the output is only one when both the inputs are zero. In all other cases, the output is always equal to Z, right? So you might get questions also in your MCQs that which is the gate in which the output is one, in all other cases, the output is zero, right? Or what is that gate in which when we put the inputs as zero, the output becomes one, and in all other cases, the output is zero, right? So you should know that it is a not gate. So you have to select which options are given to you, and accordingly, you need to select your answer, right? Okay, so this is about the not gate. Let's move to the next gate, that is the NAND gate. Likewise, you can just break this word and you can find that it is a combination of AND gate and NOT gate. So let's look at the symbol of the gate. So you can find that there is an AND gate and in front of the AND gate, a NOT gate has been placed, right? So again, the inputs are two, that is A and B, and there is one output source, that is Z. Let's see what is the symbol for NAND gate. So since it's a combination of AND plus NOT, AND means A dot B, and then NOT, so it, we have to take its complement. So it becomes A dot B whole complement. Now again, using simple De Morgan's law, this can be written as A complement plus B complement, right? Let's look at the logic truth table. So let's see when both the inputs are zero. So just place the value zero here. Zero dot zero is zero. Zero complement is one. You can either place it here or it can, you can place it here. Both will give you the same result, right? Now let's check when one of the inputs are zero and one of the outputs are one. So zero into one is zero. And then zero complement is again one. So you can find that there are two ones written here. Okay, and let's check the last one. When both the outputs, sorry, when both the inputs are one. So one dot one is one. One complement becomes zero. Fine. Okay. So this was about NAND gate. So, so far we have done about OR gate. AND gate, NOT gate, then we have done two com combinations, that is NOT gate and NAND gate. Now let's see what is in the next slide. Now what are universal gates? NAND and NOR gates, they are known as universal gates because any digital circuit can be realized completely by using either of these two gates and also, they can generate the three basic gates, that is AND, OR, and NOT gate. So your universal gate, it provides the flexibility and offers enormous advantage to the logic designers. So this can be one of your MCQ questions, that which gates are called the universal gates. So you should know that they are the NAND and the NOR gates, because they can generate the three basic gates of AND, OR, and NOT. Right? Okay. Now let's move on to the next one, that is XOR gate. XOR gate, or it is also known as exclusive OR gate. So according to the name, that you should have an OR gate here, and there will be some combinations also. Now let's study what is an exclusive OR gate. So this is the symbol for exclusive OR gate. Output is your Z. We have two inputs, A and B. We call it as A direct sum B. So this symbol is direct sum. What is the meaning of this symbol? It means A complement dot B plus A dot B complement. So which gates do you find here? If I check this, 
This is a combination of AND gate. Again, if I check this part, this is the combination of AND gate. And if I combine these two, there is a plus symbol that means this is a combination of an OR gate. That means there should be two AND gates and one OR gate, right? According to the symbol. Now let's check the circuit diagram. So you can find that there are two AND gates and there is one OR gate. Let's study. So I can see that there are two input sources A and B. First, I have to make this A complement dot B. A complement means that in front of A, there should be a NOT gate placed. So you can see that in front of A terminal, I have placed a NOT gate. This is my B input source. So when A is coming from here, if I place the NOT gate, the output will come as A complement, right? And then I need A complement dot B. So A complement and B, I have combined them with the help of an AND gate. So the outcome of this end would be A complement dot B, right? Likewise, let us generate A dot B complement. So you can see that this is my A and I want B complement. So in front of B, I have placed a NOT gate, right? So when B comes from here, it enters the NOT gate the output will become B complement. So A and B complement, I have to combine it with the help of an AND logic gate. So I have placed an AND gate here. And then when I combine these two outputs, this output was giving me A complement dot B and this output was giving me A complement, sorry, A dot B complement. And then I need to add them up. So I am placing a OR gate in front of it. So when these two inputs, they enter, the output will become A direct from B. I hope it is clear. Okay, so let's look at the truth table. So for the truth table, the two entries, when both the inputs are zero, I can place the entries here and check what is my output. Zero complement is one, one into zero is zero. Likewise, zero into zero complement. Zero complement is one, zero into one is again zero, and zero plus zero is also zero, right? Let's check when one of the inputs are zero and one of the outputs are one. Let's see when A is zero and B is one. If A is zero, zero complement will be one. One into one is one, right? Now, if A is 0 and B is 1, B complement will be 0. So, 0 into 0 is 0. So, this result was 1. 1 plus 0, it will give me 1. Likewise, I can check this also. This will give me 1. Now, let's check the last one when both the entries are 1. 1 complement is 0. 0 into 1 will be 0. Plus, 1 into 1 complement. 1 complement is also 0. So 1 into 0 will be 0. So 0 plus 0, my answer is 0. Right? Any doubts in OR gate? Exclusive OR gate? Okay. One of the student is writing me that the screen is not clear. You can just refresh your system because it is clear for everybody now. So you can just refresh your system. Fine. Okay. So now, likewise, we have another gate. Okay. Let's look at this. This is again, I've told you in the starting. That exclusive OR gate with inputs A and B, it implements the logical expression that we have just discussed right now. When both the inputs are different, so you can see that when the inputs are different, then what happens? Then the output becomes high or logic one. So you can see that when both the inputs are different, the output is high voltage or the answer is one. And when both the inputs are same, that means when both are zero or both are one, then the output becomes low or logic zero. So you can see that the output is zero. That means it is low voltage or the answer is zero. 
right? Okay. Then let's move on with the next one that is exclusive NOR gate. So the symbol is X NOR gate, right? Let's see how do we write it in the symbolic form. Now an exclusive NOR gate, we write Z is equal to A direct sum B and then we take its complement, right? So an exclusive, in the previous one, exclusive OR gate, we were just writing A direct sum B. Now when I'm saying exclusive NOR gate, that means in front of exclusive OR gate, I'm placing a N. So the symbol is automatically written as a direct sum B and then we are taking its complement, right? So we have just done in the previous slide, what is the meaning of A direct sum B? It is A complement dot B plus A into B complement. So when I take its complement, I get my result as A dot B plus A bar dot B bar. I left this as an exercise for the students. You just apply the basic laws of Boolean algebra and you can just deduce that expression and you will get this as the answer. You will get A dot B plus A bar dot B bar, right? Let's discuss this and let's see which gates will be used. So I can see that I have A dot B. A dot B means it is a combination of an AND gate. If it is A bar dot B bar, again, I need an AND gate here. And then these two have to be combined with the help of plus. Plus means I have to place a OR gate, right? Okay, let's see the circuit diagram. So let's first see how do we get A dot B. So there are two input sources, A and B. So you can see that A and B, they have been combined. And they have been combined with the help of an AND gate, right? So the output terminal from here will give me the answer A dot B. Now let's see how to get A bar dot B bar. So now I need A complement and B complement. So again in front of A, I have to place a NOT gate. So the output terminal here will be A complement. Likewise in front of B, I've placed a NOT gate. So the output terminal here will be B complement. And then A complement and B complement, they need to be combined together with the help of an AND gate. So the output here is A dot B. The output here is A complement dot B complement. And then I need to combine them with the help of OR gate. That then only I'll get a plus sign. So I've combined it with the help of an OR gate. So the output is A direct sum B whole complement, right? Okay, let's look at the logic truth table. So when both the inputs are zero, let's check. Zero into zero is zero. Zero complement is one. So one into one is one. Zero plus one will give you the answer as one. Now when one of the inputs is zero and one of the output is one, what happens? Let's check zero and one case. Zero into one is zero. Zero complement is one, one complement is zero. So one into zero will give you zero. So zero plus zero, the answer is zero. Likewise, let's check the last one, one, one. If both A and B are one, one into one is one. One complement is zero. Again, one complement is zero. Zero into zero is zero. So one plus zero, my answer is one. Clear? Uh -huh. Okay. So again, you can see that when both the inputs are same, that means when both are zero or both are one, then the output is high voltage or it is logic one. And when both the inputs are different, then the output is either low voltage or it is logic zero. Clear? Fine. Now let's summarize whatever we have done so far. So we will discuss about the logic function and what is the Boolean notation for it. So AND gate means A dot B. OR gate, it means A plus B. NOT gate, it means A complement. 
NAND gate means A dot B whole complement. NOR gate, it is A plus B whole complement. Then exclusive OR gate, it is A dot B complement plus A complement dot B or it is A direct sum B. And then we have exclusive NOR gate, it is A dot B plus a bar dot b bar or it is a direct sum b whole complement. Clear? Okay. Now let's find some questions. What type of questions will you get in your exam? Look at the first question. Draw the circuit diagram of the following Boolean function. Look at the function given to you. F1 x, y, z is equal to x into y into z complement. How many inputs do you find in this function? There are three inputs, x, y, and z. And your output is x into y into z complement. So since all the three inputs have been combined with the help of dot, that means which logic operator do you want here? You need an AND operator, right? So let's look at the circuit diagram. So we have x, we have y, we have z. But I need z complement. So in front of z, I am putting a not gate. So this will give me z complement. And then I'm combining all the three with the help of an AND operator, AND logic gate, and the answer, the final output is my function f1, which is x into y into z complement. Clear? OK, so this was very simple exercise. Okay, so let's move on with the next exercise. Draw the circuit diagram of the following Boolean function. So the Boolean function now will f2 x comma y comma z. This is equal to x plus y bar z. So how many functions do you see here? You see there is plus and this part there is a dot operator here. That means there is a combination of AND operator as well as OR operator, right? Okay. Uh, I told you in the very beginning that your ST2 will be MCQ based. So these are the basic questions I'm telling you how to attempt it. And then we will discuss what type of questions you will get in your MCQs, right? So don't get confused. All your MC, uh, ST2 as well as ST3 if it is planned. And maybe after that, your N terms are all MCQ based. There is no theoretical question come, going to come, right? But these type of questions will come in your MCQ. How they will come in your MCQs, I will just let you know in the next few slides, right? But you should know how to answer these questions. Okay. Let's see the circuit diagram. So you can see that we have an input source x. Then I want my output as y bar z. So I'm writing, taking the input as y, I'm placing an not gate here. So the output will come as y complement. And then we have z. So I'm combining y and z with the help of an and gate. So here the output will be y bar z. And then this output y bar z and x they have been combined with the help of and or gate and the final answer is f2. Clear? So this is how we draw the circuit diagram if my boolean function is given to you, right? Okay. Let's check out the next one. So you can see there are three functions. If I break it into three functions, we have x bar, y bar, z plus x bar y z plus x y bar i'll give you two minutes quickly draw it in your notebooks and then i'll show you what are the circuit diagrams just try everybody you should try on your own the function
Okay. So I think you have tried. Now let's discuss. Okay. So it is a bit messy circuit diagram you can see. So let's first discuss about X bar, Y bar, Z. So you can see that I have to place a NOT gate in front of X. I have to place a NOT gate in front of Y. And then these three have to be combined with the help of an AND gate, right? So I'm taking first of all the three inputs as X, Y, Z. And I have placed in front of X a NOT gate. And I have placed in front of Y a NOT gate. Now, this outcome will be Y complement and this outcome will be X complement. X complement, Y complement. And you can see that Z is coming like this. And it is going up and it is meeting here, right? So these three have been combined with the help of an AND gate. So here, my output will be X bar, Y bar, Z. Now let's discuss about X bar, Y, Z. So you can see, this was my X bar. This is coming like this. Here, this is X bar. Then I need Y. So Y have been brought like this. And I need Z. So this is how Z is reaching this logic gate. And then I'm combining these three with the help of an AND logic gate. So here, this output will be X bar Y Z. And likewise, I need X into Y bar. So you can see that I need X. So this is my X, which is coming to the third gate. This is my X and I need Y bar. So Y bar, this was my Y. It entered here through a NOT gate, it became Y bar. And now it is coming down and it has reached this gate. And I've combined this with the help of again an AND gate. And here my output is X into Y bar. And finally, these three things have to be combined with the help of plus. So I'm putting a OR gate in front of it. And the final answer is X. Right? Okay. Now, let's see how will you get your MCQ based questions. One of the student is writing me that uh, how will we draw the circuits? You don't need to draw the circuits. All the circuits will be provided to you in the question. You just need to select the best answer. Right? So MCQ is very simple. So you don't have to do anything. Everything will be provided to you in the questions or in the options. You need to mark the correct one, right? Okay. Uh, no, it's not necessary to draw half rings at the intersection of two lines. It is just to clear the pictures, right? So it's not necessary. Okay. Now, let's look at the MCQ. The output of a logic gate is one when all the inputs are zero as shown below. So this is your truth table given. So you can see that the output of a logic gate is one when all the inputs are zero. Which gate is this? A NAND gate, an exclusive OR gate, NOR gate, or exclusive NOR gate. Mark your options, hurry up. Okay, so I'm getting some of the answers. So let's check which one is the correct option. So it is a NOR gate, right? So the ones who have written NOR gate, clear. It is the correct one, right? Okay. So I think now you are getting some idea that how your MCQs will come in the exams on this topic. 
let's look at the next question. Find the Boolean algebra expression for the following system. Look at the system. And you have to tell me which Boolean algebra suits this circuit diagram. All the options are provided to you. Quickly give me the answer. Which one is it? Okay, so many of you are marking the correct option. So I think the lecture is getting cleared. Okay, so I think I should discuss now. So the correct option is the last option. Let's see the explanation behind the circuit diagram. Okay. So you can see there are two terminals and you, uh, one of you have asked me that it is necessary to put half rings. No, you can see in this circuit diagram, there are no half rings provided, right? Okay, so you can see that A and B, they have been combined with the help of an AND gate. So here, what is my output? My output is A dot B. And then you can see that A and B have been combined with the help of an OR gate here. So it is A plus B. And then there is an OR gate placed in front of it. So we have to take its complement. And then both have been joined with the help of an OR gate. So your answer comes out to be A dot B plus A plus B whole complement, right? So it is the last option, that is the D option, right? Okay. So I didn't find uh, none of the answer. One of you have written C option. Maybe there is a, some mistake you have done. Rest, all of you have written correct option, that is answer D. Very good. Okay. Now, Let's have a quick question. Let me see how many of you have understood this topic. And the question is, quickly mark your answers. Which one is a universal gate? Okay, so let me close it. So what is the correct option? It is the B option that is NAND gate and NOR gate, right? But a very few of you have marked AND gate and OR gate. I don't know why. I have also shown you a slide which was talking about the universal gates, right? Okay, so the B option is the correct option, good. So with this, we come to the end of the first section that is applications of Boolean algebra and logic gates. Now we move on to the next section of today's presentation that is applications of Boolean algebra and switching theory. Now what is switching theory all about? Now let's see what is switching theory. Switching circuit theory is applicable to the design of telephone systems, computers and similar systems. Switching circuit theory provided the mathematical foundations and tools for digital system design in almost all the areas of modern technology, right? So let's see, what is a switch basically? So if you find a normal switch at your home, it is either in an on or it is in an off switch, right? There are two positions, either it is in the off position or it is in the on position. A switch is a device in an electric circuit which lets or does not let the current to flow through the circuit, right? So when the switch is on, that means you let the current to flow through the circuit. And when the switch is off, you do not let the current to flow through that circuit, right? So this is the normal symbol of how do we write a switch. So these are the terminals X and Y and S is a switch. So if S is equal to zero, the switch is open. So in this case, you can see that this line is not joined here. So here the switch is open. That means S and Y, they are not connected with each other, right? And when I close the switch, that means if S is equal to one, 
that means the switch is closed that means x and y get connected right so x and y are connected if and only if the value of s is equal to 1 if s is equal to 0 the switch will always be open right so no current will pass through it and hence x and y will not be connected with each other okay so the switch has two states on or off on means the closed state that means s is equal to 1 and off means the open stage that means s is equal to 0 if the switch is on that means it is closed current will pass through it and if the switch is off that means it is open current will not pass through it so this is simple i think everybody of you know it about the switch right okay now let's see what are the two different connections that are available in a switch so we have two connections first is a series connection how does the series connection look like so you can find in this diagram there are two switches a and switch b so according to you when will x and y be connected x and y will be connected if and only if both the switches a and b are closed right that means a dot b should be equal to one that means whenever i'm talking about a series connection in a switch what is my notation it will be always a dot b right okay so a dot b the series connection is represented by either a dot b or a conjunction b right clear okay the next one parallel connection what happens in a parallel connection so you can find here that these are the two switches that have been connected with x and y in parallels and you can see that x and y can be connected if any one of them is closed if a closes b is still open x and y can get connected through this circuit and if somehow a becomes open and b is closed x and y gets connected through this path that means in this x and y are connected if and only if a plus b is equal to 1 and how do we represent it it is represented by a plus b or a disjunction b clear that means for series connection dot symbol will be used and for parallel connection plus symbol will be so this uh, repeatedly you know, I uh, tell you in the classes also that in every chapter the operators are going to remain sim same just their naming will be depend different according to the different subjects or chapters that you are dealing in discrete structures from the very beginning the meaning of intersection dot disjunction a conjunction right they are all same but whenever we do a new chapter they are named accordingly right so you have seen seen the same thing in logic gates now the same thing is occurring in switches also but their terminologies are changing so now a dot b means it is a series connected switch and now here if i talk about a plus b it means it is a parallelly connected switch right okay now let's look at this illustration so you can find that this is a circuit there is an led attached here and you can find that there are two switches u and b which have been connected in series and there are two switches x and y which have been connected in parallel now my question is when will this led glow the led lamp will glow when the switch x or y is closed and u and v are both closed right when will the circuit be closed it will be closed only when u closes b closes that that means u and v both the series connected switch they have to close and then one of x and y have to get closed right that means the lamp will only glow when the switches x or y and u and v they are both closed right okay now again we have the circuit diagrams for the boolean expressions in this topic also let's see this is a boolean expression given to you it is a conjunction 
B disjunction C, or I can read it as A and B or C. How do we make it? Let's look at the switching theory circuit diagram. So I have to connect B or C with the help of a parallel connection. So you never close your switches. The switches are always marked like this, right? So B and C, they have been put in parallel and we are connecting A switch with a series connection, right? So this is A and clear. So wherever we have and, it means a series connection. Wherever we have or, it means it is a parallel connection. Clear? Okay. Fine. Next. Look at the second question. Construct the circuit diagram represented by the Boolean expression. So you can see there is one switch. This is the second switch. And both have been connected with the help of an OR operator. So if I look at the first expression, the three switches A, B, and C, they have been connected with the help of AND. And A bar, B bar, C bar, they are also connected with AND operator, right? Let's look at the switching theory circuit diagram. So I can see that A, B, C are connected in series. So there are AND. A, B, C, and A bar, B bar, C bar. Now there is no concept of complement here in switching theory, right? So we write the switches like this only. A complement, B complement, C complement. They are also combined in series. So they have been written here. Then this connection of series and this connection of series, they have been attached parallelly. So they are connected in parallels, right? Okay. Okay. I hope it is clear. One of you have requested me to show the last slide. Sure. Okay. This is the last slide. Okay. Is it fine now? Okay. Don't worry, I'll send you the presentations and the recordings also. So you can again revise it in the evenings so that you go through the topic again, right? Okay. And we have done this question. Now let's move on with the next one. Okay. The next question. Construct the circuit diagram represented by the Boolean expression Try it on your own. I'll give you one minute. Just try to draw the circuit diagrams. Okay, so let's see what is the circuit diagram. So it is exactly similar to the last question. The only difference is here I'm using a combination of two switches. In the last question, there were a combination of three switches, right? So let me explain this question. X1 and X2 or X1 complement and X2 complement. So X1 and X2, that means X1 and X2 are connected in series. So we have connected X1 and X2. You can see series connection is used. And then we have this combination, X1 complement and X2 complement. Again, it is a series connected. 
So we are combining it in series. Again, I'm repeating it that there is no provision of complement symbol here. So X1 switch and X1 complement switch, the representation is same. We only symbolize it. Whatever symbol for the switch is given to us, we write that symbol. The symbol here was X1, so I've written here X1. Here the symbol is X1 complement. So I'm writing in this switch as X1 complement. So X1 complement and X2 complement, they have been combined in series. And then this part and this part, they have been combined with OR operator. That means they are parallelly connected. So you can see that these two series combinations, they have been put in parallel. And this is how the circuit mm -hmm. diagram looks like. So I hope I could explain it. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next question. Represent the following circuit diagram symbolically. Okay, just try. I'll just give you a hint. You can see that, first of all, check out the circuit. X2 and X3, they have been connected in parallel. Then the output of this has been connected with X1 in series. Then this part and this part has been connected in parallel. So check out your options. Which one is the correct option? Mark your options. Okay, so let us see what is the correct option. And the correct option is the B option, right? Now, how to check your correct answers from the options? See, first of all, let us see that X2 and X3, they were connected in parallels. That means X2 or X3. So out of these four options, you can see that X2 or X3 is present in these three options, right? So this already crosses, right? Out of these three options, we have to pick the next one, the correct option. Let's see X2 or X3. X1 is connected in series, so it is AND. So I should have AND, X1 AND, X2 or X3. So I have X1 AND here. So this can be one of the options. Can this be the correct option? There is OR symbol, so this also crosses off. And finally, I have this. So this and B and D can be the correct options, right? Now let's check the third part. This part has been connected with X2 complement in parallel. So it is again OR option. So out of this and this, which one is the OR option? This one. So B should be the correct option. And this is how you choose your multiple choice question. Clear? Yeah? Okay. Now we move on with the next one. This is a practice problem for you. You have to construct the circuit diagram for the following Boolean expressions. Quickly note it down. This is your homework. And I will discuss the answers of these two problems in my tomorrow's presentation. I will begin with this. And tomorrow I will start with graph theory, right? One important announcement for all the students. The students who could not give FA1, who were depending on FA2, on every Saturday during this duration, there will be four doubt sessions. In every doubt session, we will conduct a quiz of 10 marks, depending on whatever syllabus is covered during that week, right? So this Saturday, Whosoever takes the doubt session, whatever topics are covered from Monday to Friday, those topics will be selected and we will conduct a short quiz of 10 marks, all MCQ based questions. So the ones who have not given FA2, 
their marks will be adjusted through those quiz questions, quiz marks, right? And it is compulsory for every student. So th even those who have given your FA1, they can also give. So the best out of the two tests we will take, right? Mm -hmm. So I got many queries before I started with my lecture about FA, what about FA2? So I'm again repeating, in every doubt session, there will be four doubt sessions conducted during this month. In every doubt session, we will conduct a 10 marks quiz, all MCQ based. The syllabus will be taken 